live. And, it, answer the and, question. And, answer the question. Yeah, murder. Because if, if you're because if your kids if your kids murdered somebody, that would be justification for you to lock them in the basement and torture them. But, well, I, I would have to agree with whatever the judge has the I, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about a reasonable application of law. I'm saying, is there anything that your kids could ever do, including not loving you back, that would be justification that would you ever lock them in the basement and torture them? And ne neither would the Lord. No. He does according to your theology. And I'll say that not only am I morally superior to God, but you are as well, because you're a decent human being. Most of us are. Yes, and, and I agree with you. Why is that? I totally, I totally agree with so, you in that and, aspect that you're and, a decent human being, and, and I'm a decent human being. And yet you think that I'm going to hell. No, don't I you? don't. You don't think I'm going to hell? Why no. not? I, I, what I think is it's not my judgment on you to make that determination. Do you, I don't know do you, you think, mean. okay, do you think only, there, only, hang only on, the I got you, God I understand that, I, under, I understand your theology that only God can judge. Do you think there's a hell? Yes. Do you think that based on the biblical, biblical uh, or based on your theology, that God is going to send me to that hell? I don't know. I can't okay. make uh, that judgment. Yes, yes, Does he you send can. anybody there? Does he send, Does he send there? Do you think God sends anybody there? Yes, he does. Do you think that apostasy is the one unforgivable sin that God is certain to send you to hell for? I, I, think, I think not accepting the, uh, Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is the one uh, unpardonable uh, sin, and you have that Continue. opportunity. I, I understand. Until you die. I understand. Don't, you don't have to put a qualifier on it. So, you mm -hmm. believe there's a hell. You believe your God sends people to hell. You believe that one of the criteria for God sending people to hell is not accepting Jesus as their Savior, Correct. So if I tell you that I do not accept Jesus as my Savior, then clearly you believe that I'm going to hell. But if I died this second, would I go to hell? It doesn't, it doesn't matter what I think. Yes, I'm it does. Yes. Idiot yes. No, it does matter what you think. Please. No, just, it doesn't. Yes, it, it does. Would you let me finish, please? Okay. Based on all of that, if I died right now, you think that I'm going to hell. The question is, do you think I deserve it for that? I think only God can I, make that judgment. Oh, God, you're done. Go away. If you can't think for yourself, no wonder you believe in a God. <laughs> if you're so unwilling, that, that tells me everything I need to know. That right inside of you, right now, dealing with those difficult questions, there is a moral struggle where you're beginning to realize that you are more moral than the God that they've forced you to believe, that they've conned you into accepting. You don't believe that I necessarily deserve to go to hell for exercising the quote-unquote free will that you think your God gave me. You don't think that the dictates of a conscience, whether or not somebody believes, is a sufficient justification for eternal torture, and yet you're just too damn cowardly to say it. You are better than your God. You are better than your religion. So am I. So is Don. So is damn near everybody on the planet. I wish you people would wake up and see this. Stop apologizing for this. It's not the good book. There's nothing good about it. All it does is poison minds. All it does is make you sacrifice your humanity. The only thing that you have that is of any value in order to sit around in deference to, to your gods. While Don was talking, I reject the notion of sin, and you talked about whether or not I'm more moral. I made a list of things that I might consider sins if the concept of sin were valid. Number one, credulity, gullibility. Um, I'd say that's a sin. Voluntary willful, willful ignorance, I'd say that's a sin. Letting fear prevent you from understanding reality, I'd, I'd call that a sin. Limiting the rights and freedoms of others in order to make them abide by your standards, that's a sin. Sacrificing the mental, emotional, and physical well-being of a child in deference to your religion, that's a sin. Wasting the one and only life that you know you're going to have Worrying about and working for an afterlife that somebody told you might be there, that's a sin. And it's a shame that so many people are so sucked into this religious thing that even when you lead them down the path step by step, as soon as they get to the point where they'd have to admit that, yes, when I think about it, that is an immoral thing, they instead have to add 20 qualifiers and buts and maybes to their answer, just like you did. Your God is, isn't real. He's not moral. The Bible isn't moral. 
Islam isn't more. None of these religious systems, anything that, that deteriorates the value of human beings, anything that hangs on to Bronze Age ideals about genocide and slavery and murder and deference to, to higher powers, none of those things are moral. We've graduated beyond that, and I'm sorry that we've had to drag religions kicking and screaming in the 21st century, but some of you got to let this stuff go. You're not going to get anywhere until you realize that it's okay not to be afraid. It's okay not to say, you know, I think slavery is wrong. I think slavery was probably always wrong. Um, I think that you're probably a good person. And, and yeah, that does sound like a crappy system. There are some Christians who've done that. Billy Graham, for example, doesn't think that hell is eternal torture and torment. He thinks it's separation from God. Others have gone a step further and said that, well, it's not hell, it's annihilation. When I'm dead, um, as an apostate, heretic, godless, heathen, proud, atheist, blasphemer, um, I won't go to hell, I will simply be annihilated. That doesn't really soften the issue for me because they still believe that somebody's getting an eternal, wonderful, blissful reward based on the fact that they believed something in the face of evidence to the contrary. A God that rewards credulity, a God that sanctions slavery, is unworthy of any kind of reverence or respect or devotion. I, I'd sooner worship Don. Don is a decent person with decent ideals. I would, I would bow down on my knees and worship Don's ideals before that from your church. church. It's insane. Hey, careful now. It's insane. We've only... I didn't, I didn't mean to rant quite so long on that. I, it's just... No, amen, Matt. You, you did great. I really <laughs> had hopes. I really had hopes for you, John, because I've been there, and I'm not saying that. I, I apologize because I know that's condescending. I'm not saying that in the, I've been there and I've gotten better. I got over it. I, I had hopes because those are the same types of discussions that I had with myself, that I had with other people, that helped me to finally realize um, that I could no longer rationally support my beliefs. I couldn't live up to the obligation of 1 Peter 3.15. I couldn't, and I thought you were going to reference uh, Romans 1, 19 through 22 or 23 or something as, as an argument for the moral code that everybody seems to have. Um, and, and that might have been a different conversation. But I was really optimistic. Um, and I'm, it's not that I'm unwilling to talk to you again. I am. Call back some other time. Email us, tv at atheist.community.org. Hell, if you live here in Austin, which you evidently do, we can go out for drinks and talk about it, but I have no interest in having discussions with people who are so tied up that they're unwilling to answer a question honestly. When you asked me if my kids committed a crime, if, if it was my duty to say you need to go to jail and serve the time, I didn't hesitate. Yes, that's the answer. That's the law. That's the ethical responsibility. It would break my heart. I don't actually have kids of my own right now. Uh, it would break my heart. I would feel bad about it. But that's, that's the obligation. That's the correct answer. That's the one and only correct answer. You killed someone else. Um, that was wrong. But what I wouldn't do is construct a torture chamber in my basement and threaten to confine them there if they didn't love me, or even if they murdered somebody. Cruel. The kind of, of, of God that wants a bunch of sycophants running around, giving him hand jobs. Oh, you're so wonderful. You are the great and mighty creator of the universe. We are so small and puny. You brought us into this world. You can take, you, uh, take us out. We are worthless without you. There's a girl who's been writing articles at ETSU, and I've been commenting on them. She's a, she's a nice student, pretty, pretty sure she's a nice person. And what she says is, I'm nothing without God. And yet, people ask, what's the harm of religion? It's just, you know, I mean, uh, we cite all these different problems with religion, the, the you know, global gag rules and things like that, the, the, uh, the oppression of different people. There's a bigger harm with religion, and it's the reason why I'm outspoken about it. And that's because the average feel-good, Johnny-in-the-pew person who is decent and kind and loving and good to their family and generally a good person to be around has polluted their mind to the point where they are unable to take credit for their accomplishments and responsibility for their actions. They are unable to interact on an interpersonal level with the people around them to build a community in this cooperative society where that is absolutely essential. They have got this mentality that they are worthless without God. Without God, I couldn't breathe. The guy calls in.